Dusty Stick says, hey, Mike, what are your thoughts on the Oregon governor race? That's a really great question, actually. Um, if you don't know anything about the race, you would think that it's a pleasant surprise because um, there's three candidates who are actually viable. The problem is that the independent candidate, who's kind of like this Yang adjacent individual named Betsy Johnson, uh, Andrew Yang has like praised her before, shared an article about how Oregon could have an independent governor. She's literally just like a corporate Democrat. So we don't have three different options. It's the same options. It's more progressive corporate Democrat or hyper conservative corporate Democrat like Joe Manchin. And then there's a forced brother Republican. Um, the problem with this race that really irritates me is that Betsy Johnson, this is an individual who used to actually be my state uh, state senator. And she was very progressive before she turned into a mansion. And I believe in common sense gun safety legislation. I've supported it my entire time in the legislature and as speaker made sure we got important things done. My opponents have voted or are not in favor of those things. I bet they would have voted no if they had been there and then when the ones who were there did vote no. That was background checks. That was red flag laws. That was safe storage requirements. Things that we know work. You have just heard from my opponents. Representative Drazen doesn't want to do anything. Tina wants to take your guns. And she, uh, when I talked to her about sponsoring a resolution to get money out of politics, the Wolfpack Amendment specifically, she was open to it. Like she returned voicemails. Like she was really interested in trying to fix the country. But now the whole reason why she's viable is because her entire campaign is bankrolled by a couple of elites. She actually outraised the Republican and the Democrat in this race as an independent. And so that's why our system is so fucked up. That's why we need electoral reform. Because the problem is... Whenever you have these independent candidates, they're not going to be viable unless they're like some darling of a rich person or two rich people. Now, I'm not opposed to like an independent running. Certainly, I'm worried about the spoiler effect because, you know, some polls indicate that it's a toss up between the Republican and the Democrat because Betsy Johnson is like 10 points behind, although she probably pulls from the Republicans a little bit, but definitely more so from the Democrats. But either way, like, I'm not opposed to an independent running. I actually voted for an independent, I, I think, two times in a row. His name was Chris something. I can't remember, but he was very, very progressive. Um, I voted for him when Kitzhaber was still in office. And I think I voted for him. He ran for a different office, and I either wrote him in or voted for him. Either way, like, I voted for independence, so I'm not opposed to it inherently. But if we're going to have alternatives to Democrat and Republicans, then we should have an actual meaningful alternative that has some ideological differences between both of them. But really, it's just more corporate. Like, I watched the debate uh, last week, and Betsy Johnson literally said, if I'm the governor of Oregon, I'm going to have um, this the number of every CEO on speed dial. I would be a governor bent on economic development, having the phone numbers of the CEOs of our major corporations on speed dial, reaching out to them constantly, saying, what can the state of Oregon do to partner better with you to anticipate your needs? Now, do you think that she's going to be, ne be negotiating on behalf of workers? trying to lobby these CEOs who she's personally in touch with to, you know, uh, improve working conditions, give their workers raises, opt for unionization. Of course not. It's going to all be for corruption, pork. If they donate to her campaign and she's elected, she's going to be doing favors for them. So that's kind of like my thoughts on the Oregon gubernatorial race. I think I'll probably end up um, expanding on my views here in the coming weeks. But um, it's, it's really frustrating because there's really not good options here. And the Democrat option is not great. It's kind of the more safer establishment pick when we had a lot of progressives running in the primary who I voted for. Um, I don't remember who I voted for because there was like four progressives and I had to like extensively research all of them to come to my conclusion. But, um, you know, there are too many progressives and I think they all split the vote and that paved the way for the more corporate Democrat. But even calling Tina Kotek, who's the Democratic Party nominee, a corporate Democrat is a little bit of a mischaracterization because even if she is a corporate friendly Democrat, Comparing her to like the standard corporate Democrat in the Senate or the House, she would be viewed as like one of the more progressive people. Like even Kate Brown, people like to shit on her. She's literally the least popular governor, according to a poll that came out recently. I'm not sure who conducted it, but either way, like she's she's hated largely due to COVID restrictions being very strict. People don't like it, right? Um, there's a lot of fear mongering, for example, uh, with the mask mandate. Oh, she wants to have this mask mandate indefinitely when that's not what it was like they had to renew the mask mandate every couple of months and rather than doing that you just make it indefinite until 
the pandemic is over and then you, you cancel it. But either way, like even for a Kate Brown being a corporate Democrat, being bankrolled by Comcast, she did good. She shocked me. She signed net neutrality into law, one of the strongest protections for net neutrality in the country. Not as strong as California's bill, but it's still good net neutrality nonetheless. She also signed worker protections that directly impacted my husband in a very good way. And it smells like shit in here because the dog just farted. But um, one of the laws that she signed um, helped my husband. So she did some good things. That's not to say that this was like a progressive, uh, a super progressive, you know, uh, governor, but it's not that bad. The Republican Winston is somebody who says, well, look, I believe that Biden won the election. Okay. Biden won. He is the president of the United States. I accept the results, but there's a big but here. Um, she is still conspiracy mongering about election integrity. She is doing dog whistles, suggesting that she'd support electoral reform, not electoral reform, the opposite of electoral reform, voter suppression, which is really scary. She's also a forced birther. She claims that she wouldn't totally ban abortion, but she's very clear about the fact that she wants to impose more restrictions on abortion. Um, and she's saying third trimester, but in actuality, we know that this is going to go deeper than that. And she's just like another corporatist. Um, one thing that is good is that even in Oregon, the Republicans, as crazy as they may be, they aren't like as bad as Republicans in D.C. Like Christine Drazen, who's the Republican nominee, is bad and I would never vote for her. She actually led the walkout when, you know, Kate Brown was trying to pass uh, climate change. With the way that she talks, specifically the rhetoric that she uses when it comes to homelessness, she doesn't like overtly say oh let's criminalize them in fact betsy johnson johnson is probably worst when it comes to rhetoric and homelessness but like the republican is like mm, we need to do something and she like uses words like compassion and even if she's not gonna do anything um it's still refreshing to see a republican not like pretend as if they're subhuman right so yeah um that's kind of the state of the Oregon governor race. That's my thoughts on it. Currently, um, I'll be voting for Tina Kotek. Um, not really that begrudgingly. She has some pretty solid plans. Um, there's a lot about her that I don't like. She's also very business friendly. And when I say business friendly, I mean more friendly to businesses than workers. And I hate that. Um, but when it comes to, you know, this independent that's in the race, I am worried that because there's no right wing or I mean, Betsy Johnson is right wing, but like, because there's no alt independent who's pulling an equal amount of votes from the Republican, I'm worried about the spoiler effect. Um, and I still think that Tina Kotek probably is the favorite. I looked at 538 polling and out of a hundred different times, Tina Kotek has won 70% of the time. But still, there are some polls, right-leaning polls, but polls nonetheless, that show that it's a toss-up, that Drazen edges out. It's in, you know, the margin of error, but it's still, it's really close. And there's a lot of people who are dissatisfied with Kate Brown because of the uh, way that she handled COVID. And in particular, I think what really was the straw that broke the camel's back was vaccine uh, mandates for employees. Um, she instituted that early. She was really good about that. She was very proactive. And they hated that like i feel like every oregonian uh maybe this is the same for you as well celeste knows someone who either quit their jobs because of the vaccine mandate or were forced to get vaccinated begrudgingly because of this vaccine mandate and they're holding a fucking grudge and it's not like they liked her beforehand but that was like that was the straw that broke the camel's back and like i don't want to overly defend kate brown but she's not that bad to say that like she's the worst governor in america is so ridiculous like the fact that she's the least popular governor when you have individuals like greg abbott and Ron DeSantis who are fascists you know it goes to show you how reactionary politics can really take hold even in blue states and what a lot of people don't know about oregon is that sure portland is very blue it's overall a liberal state but all you have to do is drive you know 20 30 minutes outside of portland and more rural er rural areas of oregon and it is very conservative. And, you know, it's similar to the Rust Belt in the sense that, like, a lot of factories closed here, uh, a plant closed um, uh, here or there, uh, and these jobs were outsourced. So you have people who are economically devastated. There's there's some, um, uh, I think in my mom's uh, district, it's one of the Obama to Trump counties, actually. Um, 
So, you know, you have people who have a reason to be disaffected with the establishment, but at the same time, you know, reactionary politics has really taken hold and there's been like militias outside of Portland to form in more rural areas of Oregon. So you have this kind of like rural or urban uh, divide right now. There's even a movement in Eastern Oregon to kind of switch and, and go to Idaho, for example. So there's a lot. Oregon is a very interesting state, but in, in this particular election, I'm absolutely voting for Tina Kotek. And um, I'm not apologetic about that. She's not my first choice, uh, not my second choice, not my third choice. But is she um, better than the other two options by a mile and a half? Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, I grew up in Eastern Oregon and can confirm. Yeah, it's it's shockingly uh, racist <laughs> in a lot of areas of Oregon. And people don't know this when you tell them this. They have no idea how racist Oregon is because you see this deep blue state and you see, you know, you have this visualization of Portland and they're so quirky you know the portlandia show i think it was an accurate portrayal uh, you know uh, albeit hyperbolic of people in portland because they're all very kooky i'm kooky you know um but at the same time leave portland you know leave these bigger cities and god damn is it really really reactionary and regressive for like for sure like and you'll notice that like it's it's palpable the minute you leave portland you will notice that shit thanks for the question by the way fuck maybe i'll turn that into a segment why elaborate further when I just kind of shared all my thoughts, right? Mike is a total shit lib. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.